What TV show has the best pilot episode? Lost. I'd argue it has the worst pilot. Didn't the motherfucker crash the plane? I mean, the plane was broken in half in midair. He's not Anakin Skywalker, wouldn't really expect most pilots to pull that landing off. Futurama. That show had me hooked from the start and 20 years later it's still an amazing pilot episode and series as whole. It's also pretty amazing they set up something in the pilot that would be a major plot point many seasons later with Nibbler's Shadow. I still think about the suicide machine all the time. You are now dead. Thank you for using Stop and Drop, America's favorite suicide booth since 2008, what a lousy stinking ripoff, kicks the booth. Fry and Ben are having drinks and their first real conversation at a bar. Fry, I don't get it, why does a robot need to drink? Bender, defensively, I don't need to drink. I can quit any time I want, had me at that moment. My parents, my co-workers, my girlfriend. I'll never see any of them again. You're a who are you? One of my favorite lines in the whole show. The Chapel Show's first episode had Clayton Bigsby the black and blind clansman. He has left his wife. Stating, shsl lover. I fucking lost it the first time I hear this line from the episode. And all the measures with that Chingy Chang talk, I can't understand Yahoo, get out of my country I I I I I, white power. So many quotables ha ha ha. If anyone f my sister, it's gon be me. Double quote. The Walking Dead. I lost interest later in the series, like season 4 or something, but that first episode is awesome. The first season had a very good director, then AMC wanted to make nothing but easy money and shit went sideways. Frank Darabont, the guy who directed The Shawshank Redemption and The Green Mile. He left halfway through the second season after AMC cut the budget in half and doubled the number of episodes. That is why the second season was such a shit show. Why did AMC cut the budget? Well, AMC owns the rights to The Walking Dead but rented Mad Men from a different company. That other company demanded more money for Mad Men's last season or two, and that money came from TWD's production budget. Arrested Development had a perfect pilot in my opinion. Funny from the start and introduced all the characters. Their illusions Michael. I trick is what a whore does for money. Or cocaine? Aren't you my cousin? Maybe this was George Michael's cousin. Maybe god what a good line. X-Files. It set the mood perfectly for that show, as long as you ignore the awful sound quality compared to later episodes in the first season. No one down here but the FBI is most unwanted, plus Gillian Anderson kickstarting puberty for me. Good lord. Still the number one crush. And now my highest voted comment is about me still holding a candle for GA. Mudder and Scully are a bee woman's dream. Fargo. The ending of the pilot was shocking and really set the tone for the rest of the amazing first series. Fargo is one of the best shows I've seen. Pilot was amazing. Lorne Malvo. Evening. Officer. Gus Grimley. Evening. License and registration. Please. Lorne Malvo. We could do it that way. You ask me for my papers. I tell you it's not my car, that I borrowed it. See where things go from there. We could do that. Or you could go get in your car and drive away. Gus Grimley, now, why would I do that? Lorne Malvo, because some roads you shouldn't go down. Because maps used to say, there be dragons here, now they don't. But that don't mean the dragons aren't there. The scene where he's at the post office and trying to get the package and the person is arguing that he can't pick up someone else's package. And he just goes, am I going to have to go back there and get it myself, so good. Also, this is highly irregular, no, highly irregular was the time I found a human foot in a toaster oven. This is just plain odd. Dexter's was pretty good. At least I think it was. Mr. Robot. Coming from an IT field, having a TV show get hacking so right from the first episode was a breath of fresh air. After years of the cheesy graphical interface with skull and crossbones and shit to represent hacking on movies and TV, seeing a show consistently use realistic command line interfaces, IP addresses, software, peripheral devices, social engineering, etc., is amazing. 
I don't think anything could top that one NCS I seen, I believe, in terms of reality where two people are using the same fucking keyboard to both hack at the same time. No. No. The absolute single top of the pile of dramatic hacking ever, was Scorpion. What was Scorpion? Scorpion was the FBI consultant shtick show, but with nerds, and a non-nerd waitress because of course. So what happened that made Scorpion the king of hacking insanity? The villain of one episode managed to disable communications between every plane in the world, and Lax. No plane anywhere could land at Lax. Because pilots can't land without computers? Okay. But. But. It doesn't end there. See, one plane took off from Australia. The length of that flight meant it was in the air the longest. And just so happened to have taken off, and ceased communications with the Australian's towers. See, the hacker had infected a global network that connected all the ATC towers in the world to then download the concurrent malware to planes. So anyway, this Aussie flight took off before the attack took place. So it had a valid copy of the communications software, and they had to download it from the flying airplane. But 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 but. The plane was moving too fast for wireless downloads to work. So what did the genius hacking heroes do? Drove a Ferrari, at breakneck speed, down the runway, under the airplane, as it flew less than 20 feet off the ground. The co-pilot, proceeded to throw a Cat5 cable, out the back of the airplane, which was plugged into a laptop in the passenger seat of the car. That was the hack. Scorpion didn't last long, it has to been seen to be believed. Charlie has cancer, then they regrouped and shot the gang gets racist as the official pilot. Which was also excellent. Is he your brother or your brother? So, I took him to the back alley. And I tore his ass apart. I love the look on Dennis face as he says that. Like he's starting to put it together. Westworld. The heavy ideas kept coming fast one after the next and I thought whoa, slow down and pace yourselves, guys. But I was eating it all up throughout episode 1. I'm actually thinking of creating a class called Philosophy of Westworld dealing with questions of bioethics, labor, technology and narrative. I'd be excited to teach that one. I love how the opening makes it seem like Teddy is a new guest arriving to Sweetwater. Yeah, that was great twist right at the beginning. That and having Ed Harris in black acting like the gunslinger from the original Westworld movie was a great misdirect too. I thought for sure he was a host and Teddy was human when it was vice versa. Dead Like Me was fantastic. Poignant, funny, dark and charming. Loved Dead Like Me. While Ellen Muth was great, Mandy Patinkin really was the heart of that show. I always thought it was weird that Ellen Muth has done almost no acting roles since Dead Like Me. She hasn't been in anything since 2013. Oh and the 2000s reboot of Battlestar Galactica, hell of a pilot, hell of a show. Holy shit the first time those drums start pounding. That score is one of my favorites. Bear McCreary is a genius. Archer. The thought of me dying gave you an erection. Only half of one. The other half would have really missed you. Wait. That came out wrong. The good place. Yes. I was so hooked and binged the first season in like the days when I started watching it. I just love the show in general though. I feel like almost all of their jokes land and the humor is just so perfectly crafted and meshes well with the characters and situations they've created. First season is definitely the best but 2 and 3 are still so enjoyable. I'm halfway through to and I dare say it's funnier than 1. I had no idea what this show was, I just like Kristen Bell. This show had me cracking up immediately. Ted Danson is hilarious. The show reminds me of Better Off Ted in that it's the funniest show no one knows about. Breaking Bad. After God ended I saw people saying BB was too slow. Walt attempts to cook meth twice in the first episode alone. He also kills a guy and gravely injures another. People can really make up reasons not to like something when they want to. Plus Vince Gilligan is the master of the cold open and in media res narrative framing. Those opening shots of the RV careening down the road with the shirt twisting in the wind, and Wald standing in the middle of the road with a gun in his tighty witties, are iconic. Um those are called Walter Witties. 
I forgot just how much craziness happens in the pilot alone, until I rewatched it. I always remembered it as being spread out across a couple episodes but no, it's all packed into the first hour. Yeah the cold open is RV, gas masks, bodies sloshing around in liquid, pants hanging outside in the wind, Walt in underwear a gripping a gun as sirens approach, then we got to get from depressed high school teacher to that. Big fan of Prison Break's first episode. It's fucking mental. The tattoos, the ridiculous dialogue, the matchstick Taj Mahal. Ridiculous show overall, but a lot of fun. Community, because it introduces all the main characters, their backgrounds, and the direction of the show all in about 20 minutes. Still has the best winger speech. Jeff Winger, what makes humans different from other animals? We're the only species on earth that observes Shark Week. Sharks don't even observe Shark Week, but we do. For the same reason I can pick up this pencil, tell you its name is Steve and go like this. Breaks pencil. And part of you dies just a little bit on the inside. Because people can connect with anything. We can sympathize with a pencil, we can forgive a shark, and we can give Ben Affleck an Academy Award for screenwriting. People can find the good in just about anything but themselves. Look at me. It's clear to all of you that I am awesome. But I could never admit that. That would make me an ass. But what I can do is see what makes Annie awesome. She's driven. We need driven people or the lights go out and the ice cream melts. And Pierce. We need guys like Pierce. This guy has wisdom to offer. Pierce Hawthorne. The Dalai Lama and I. Jeff Winger. We should listen to him sometime. We wouldn't regret it. And Shirley. Shirley has earned our respect. Not as a wife, not as a mother, but as a woman. Don't test her on that, because that thing about the jukebox was too specific to be improvised. And Troy. Who cares if Troy thinks he's all that? Maybe he is. You think astronauts go to the moon because they hate oxygen? No, they're trying to impress their high school's prom king. And Abed. Abed's a shaman. You ask him to pass the salt. He gives you a bowl of soup. Because you know what, soup is better. A bed is better. You are all better than you think you are. You are designed not to believe it when you hear it from yourself. I want you to look to the person to your left. Sorry. Look at the person sitting next to you. I want you to extend to that person the same compassion you extend to sharks, pencils and Ben Affleck. I want you to say to that person, I forgive you. You've just stopped being a study group. You have become something unstoppable. I hereby pronounce you a community. I love how when Jeff talks about Pierce and how they should listen to him, Pierce starts to talk and Jeff just continues on over him. Probably my favorite part of the pilot. The Dalai Lama and I. Lol, and Troy does the same thing to Vicky in theater class. She starts to open up about always being interrupted, then Troy barges in with my uncle touch my no no. Bob's Burgers. They came right out of the gate with the fully developed characters and humor that are still going strong. You're the worst kind of autistic. Gene, why do I have to get molested? Bob, because he is not going to molest you. Gene, why? Bob, because you're heavy. Heavy kids get molested. Yeah, who wouldn't want to molest this face? Invaders in because it not only introduced us to the characters, but told us what icons hate and love. The teacher repeating doom over and over again always gets me. I'm going to sing the doom song. Doom doom doom. Jen, do you want to wake up the entire planet? I do. Game of Thrones really puts into perspective of what kind of show it is right away. The last scene in the first episode when Jamie got caught banging his sister and then pushed Bran out the window I turned to my boyfriend and said holy shit, this is going to be good. And for a few seasons, it was. And then, as all things do, it came to an end. I wonder if we'll ever find out what happens once the Night King gets past the wall? I guess we'll never know. Feeling alive, yes I am breathing the air and I'm feeling so careless.